Is it actually possible to have a fast site that has third-party widgets? Yes. Thank you very much <laughs> for the question. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. Well, basically, the uh, the social widgets are um, usually iframes that you put on the page, and there are two ways to put them there. Either you write this iframe yourself, where you have full control, or you let the third party write this uh, iframe via some sort of JavaScript. In both cases. Uh, it's possible to do that in a way that doesn't affect, uh, doesn't slow down the, the experience because usually people are here on your page to read your articles and I right. know the, the widgets can, can wait so they shouldn't be in the way um, of, uh, of the main content and the main purpose on the page. Okay. Has widget performance actually improved over the last couple of years? Yes, I think so. Um, so first of all, um, those JavaScripts that, that write the iframes uh, uh, have switched, most of the, uh, the big providers have switched to the asynchronous way of loading the scripts as a default because it's a little bit more code, so that's why uh, widget providers are kind of reluctant to put it because it's a little bit more code to paste, but uh, yeah, over the long term it's, uh, it's best. Uh, so most uh, Google Plus and Twitter and Facebook now switch to asynchronous loading. And um, so that's one, the putting the iframe on the page and then the, the content of that iframe is also uh, now, in my experience, they live it much faster because people are spending time on that. Um, it's just the, the widget developers are, are people who care about performance a lot. So yeah, it would behoove them to have it be moved exactly. quickly, right? Yeah. You mentioned asynchronous. How does an asynchronous snippet work? How does it factor in? Uh, so the um, the two ways to uh, two main ways to put a JavaScript on the page is using a, a regular script tag in the HTML, which has this blocking. Uh, behavior blocks the the rendering of the page, blocks the the rest of the downloads, and so on. And the synchronous snippet is a little trick that, that is a workaround to this blocking behavior, where you create a little node, a uh, script node, uh, set the source to it, and then append it on the page. And this way, it has this um, kind of gets out of the way of the page and let the page continue. And uh, these are now defaults in, in most of the widget providers. And uh, if not, I have actually I'll be talking about this tomorrow. Um, create a little bit of script uh, that you can use for uh, for all the all the widget providers to load. It's uh, called the social widgets BFFs. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> so, last question: switching gears a little bit. You, mm -hmm. you had a blog post recently where you said that Wiseflow is no longer just a tool; it's a platform. What does it now offer? I mean, where is it going? Okay, so it started. Um, Wiseflow was pretty successful uh, when it initially came out, and uh, Probably part of the reason was all those cores that it has. And it, it insults you a little bit, and then uh, when you see that you're not an A, but you're B or C score. But sometimes people are um, disagreeing with the way the scoring system works and so on. So we wanted to give uh, everybody the option to customize this. And, and then also, um, we wanted to take Yahoo out of the way of adding new checks and new, uh, new rules to those checks. So we, we uh, kind of rewrote this. That was about two years ago, uh, we wrote everything so that it's um, everything is more plug and play. So you can create your own rules, combine them, uh, customize the scores, and and um, make uh, Wiseflow in any way you like. And because Wiseflow is already doing all the heavy lifting of um, inspecting the page, finding all the components, all the header information, and so on, so why not use all that information for any sort of checks? So now it's possible. And actually, I demonstrated uh, in Velocity last year, two years ago, uh, a simple extension called WTF, as in Web Testing Framework, which is just an example <laughs> testing for really stupid things like font tags and blink tags and so on, just as an example. And actually, tomorrow I'll be showing another one that tests the widget uh, performance so you can run and see um, what's... Um, you can just run an automated check without expecting the source and so on. And since then, um, I stepped out of the project, but Marcel Durand, he took over and he ported the white store, which was initially a an extension for uh, Fire, uh, Firefox. Uh, now it runs in Chrome. You can run it on command line as a simple bookmarklet. So it's it's a platform on top of those other platforms. So all you need to do in order to make it your own is just create those little rule sets, which are just simple JavaScript functions, and then you can run it everywhere in in, in sort of checks. So it's uh, in that sense, it's a it's a platform now. Great. Thanks for being with us. Appreciate yeah. you taking. Thank you very much. Thank you.